It's reaction time. I'll be showing you Andy Elliott's video titled, Customers Say I'm Just Looking. A lot of us say that when we want to be left alone, right? And it's not just on the car lot. I just went to a furniture store the other day and I was pounced on the moment I walked in the door. And yes, their prices were also ridiculously jacked up, so I walked. Is there anything wrong with wanting a little quiet space to think? It's hard to process information when there's a salesman standing over your shoulder, pumping you up with information and dragging you from place to place around the car lot. Let's hear what Andy has to say to the salesmen who follow his training process. Hey guys, how you doing? It's Andy Elliott. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to overcome the objection when a customer comes on the car lot and says, I'm just looking. This is one of the common objections that I see even veteran salespeople get tied up with. After this video, you'll no longer have that problem. Get ready. So let's define what an objection actually is. It's an expression or feeling of disapproval or opposition, a reason for disagreeing. Yeah, you disagree. A guy just walked up to you uninvited when you wanted some peace and quiet to do some thinking. We know we need salesmen at some point in the sales process and that he has to make a living too, but sheesh. When you get pounced on, there's going to be a reason for disagreeing. Rock and roll. All right, when somebody comes up and says, I'm just looking, what do you say? Hi, I'm just looking. Nah, you don't say that, I'm just teasing. Look, here's what we do. When somebody says they're just looking, you say, hey, just looking for a nice looking salesperson. No, we don't say that. You know what we say? Listen, and I want to get you guys in a good mood and get you oh, ready my to goodness. learn. When somebody says, I'm just looking, <laughs> here's the underlining deal. You have to ask yourself this question before we get into how to overcome it. Here's the deal. Do they like you? So here's the deal. Car salesmen are among the least trusted professionals, including lawyers, lobbyists, elected officials, bankers. So Andy's going to help a salesman try to be more likable, you know, break the mold. So take some notes so that you, the customer, can stay firm and keep control of your next visit to the car dealership. Please write that down. Do they like you? Once you understand something, I'm just looking. This, this objection right here, this is something that happens early on in the sale. Okay? It's not something that's later on. It's something that's early on. Yeah, like the first but minute. what I want to explain to you is this. People will tell you and they will ask, okay, during the road to the sale, people say things like, what's your best price? What's your best price? What's your best price? Outside on the lot, what's your best deal going to be on this car? Do you know yeah, why those researching. objections come in? Yeah. Those objections come in because there's no relationship, there's no connection between the salesperson, okay, and the buyer. You see this little magic connection right here? I'm gonna tell you how to overcome it. If you don't have that connector, if these customers don't love you, you're gonna heal this all the time because no one wants to deal with you, all right? You have to become like a chameleon. <laughs> you know what that means? It doesn't matter who it is that's in front of you. The second they pull up, you have to show them massive love. You have to give them a smile and eyes and confidence that you're competent about your job and that they found the right person. You know, there's nothing wrong with that last piece of advice, but I have a problem with the chameleon part. You know, one of the reasons that customers mistrust salesmen is that they are, well, not genuine people. To me, the advice to become a chameleon is a step in the wrong direction. So why not name to just simply be helpful, considerate, or maybe a good listener? How about being yourself, but in a good way? So we all have strong parts of our personality that can be abrasive or displeasing to other personality styles. I get it. But I think the better advice would be to teach salespeople which personality type and tendencies they have themselves and broaden their people skills so that you can get along with others more easily. But to put on a fake face and act like what you think someone else wants you to act like, that's just too fake for me. People say, I'm just looking, when they don't have the feeling inside their stomach, that they're dealing with the right person. Do you know what they're looking for? They're actually looking for a salesperson right. that they would like to help them purchase a car. But they don't want you to be that guy. And yes, you can turn that around. Just not yet. I've went out before and I've met people and they didn't like me. And guess what? I could have quit, but I don't have a quitter mindset, okay? So you know what I do? I think about this person for a second and say, all right, all right, so I got this customer here, okay? And they've got friends. Well, people buy from people that remind them of their friends. So I wonder Flat Stanley. What, these, what this person's friends look like. You know what I do? I act like that person. 
Okay, so that's exactly what I mean. Now the salesperson is shape-shifting and profiling and making assumptions about the customers they're faced with. And as we know, homework guy viewers, that they don't always get these profiles right. All the world's a stage, I guess, including the car lot. So these people will have familiarity. So somebody comes in, they don't like me. I say, hey, you know what? They're about to tell me that they're just looking and I know that they don't like me because they probably said they're just looking or I can smell it coming. And you know what I do? I know that people buy from people that remind them of their friends. So immediately I start acting like that person that they probably would want to be friends with. And then all of a sudden the relationship starts to adjust. You let your guard down. The connection between the buyer and the salesperson is made. Okay, homework guy viewers. When the connection between the salesperson and the buyer is made, you have just let your guard down. Now the salesperson has control of the car deal. And if you trust them and you buy their shtick, you follow them around instead of making them work for you. It's perfectly fine to keep that professional distance and make it clear that you have questions and goals. And if the salesperson doesn't help you with that, then you don't want them to have your business or make money off this car deal. This will disappear for good. But if somebody says they're just looking, I'm gonna tell you what they're looking for. They're looking for somebody that seems like that they can help them. You know why? Because if I go to any place, even if I walk into Walmart or go to Burlington Coat Factory and I want to coat, when I walk in, it's a programmed response. Write that down. Programmed response. People just say it. You know why? Because they want help, but they feel like most of the time in their life when they got help, it was junk. So you know what? I don't need help. I'd rather go do it myself. Exactly. I'll go do it myself. Bingo. A programmed response is nothing more than a learned response. And that's because customers are smart and don't want to be taken advantage of. And they don't want to be convinced of buying more than they planned on. So because the help is junk, the Homework Guide Channel prepares you car buyers with how to deal with these car creeps. And hopefully if you ever do encounter a good genuine salesperson, you can tell the difference. Sometimes, even if you're a great salesperson, you're going to get, I'm just looking. You know what? You're going to have to not attach yourself to that objection. You know what attaching yourself means? It means this. Okay, yeah, no, I, I, I get that you're looking. Um, I bet if we made you a good enough deal, you probably wouldn't have to look very much longer, would you? You'd probably, no, That's don't cheesy. even play the salesman role. Watch how this, this goes. Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the store. Oh, my name's so-and-so. Yeah, you know what? We're just looking. Guys, that's awesome. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's your first place or your last place, I'm just grateful to have the opportunity to help you. Okay? We're always high in all the critical areas that are important to our customers' families. So I'll help you look around and let's see if you find something you like. Whoa, who's that guy? That guy's a freaking professional. Man, that's the way that I need you guys to be. So I want you to understand something. So true. Yes, that sounds like a professional. This is a guy who's had a lot of practice, but you need to get to know your salesperson before you trust him too much. And like Kevin always teaches, there's nothing wrong with staying in control of the car deal. It helps you get a better deal. And that makes you a professional too, a well-prepared car buyer. So do the same thing Andy tells his salespeople. Write down what you plan to say to salesmen when they come back at you with these smooth lines. Think about what you'll say and how you'll think you're going to respond. Because all the world is a stage, right? And so think it through, prepare it, think about the whole car deal from the car you want, what you can do financially, how to navigate the sale of the dealership, including what to say and how you're going to say it. The entire Homework Guy team is here to represent you, the car buyer, and that's what we love to do. Thanks for coming back, everyone. We'll see you in our next video. Kevin always says, you guys rock. I'm the amazing Elizabeth. Gotta go.